Its sound is unmistakable. Its fashionable footwear is unlikely to be found being worn anywhere else. This style of bowling, well, that's unlikely to be found being played anywhere outside of New England and some parts of Canada. And the kind of fun that's had by playing was enough to bring out this group of recent retirees on a weeknight. Growing up in New England, you know about Candlepin. It's very convenient to where we all live, from Russell to Westfield to South Hadley. Uh, so we all thought this was a great place to meet. And, uh, and there was food right around the corner and a good time. Now, if we're looking for some insight into this ball and pin sport, whose origins date back to 1880 in Worcester, Massachusetts, who better to ask than three guys whose combined experience comes in just shy of 200 years? I've been bowling at least 70 years. Well, I was 10 years old. Well, I came in, it was 1958 when I was 14, and everybody had the automatic pin setters by then. So I made it much more efficient. And that was a, a good time to get into it because there was a lot of factory leagues. It's basically a working man sport. People would go home from work at the big factories in Westfield, and they would clean up, get dressed up, come down and bowl. Like any sport, candlepin bowling has its own lingo and jargon. Long before it became a popular television series, the term Deadwood had direct ties to this game. When the candlepins are standing, once they're down on the, on the deck, it's considered dead. In tenpin, they re remove the Deadwood, candlepin stays there, and you can play it as, it, as you see fit, how you want to. You can discover if I hit it a certain way, it may carry across and carry the pins that are split apart. Kind of like playing combos in a game of pool without having to call them out ahead of time. It's a feature that makes a challenging game a little easier. For generations of children, Candlepin was their introduction to bowling because the size and the weight of the ball made it possible for nearly all ages to play. Nowadays, though, the sport is seeing a much smaller contingency of youngsters taking part. It's a little more difficult now because there's so many different sports for kids football, soccer, baseball, hockey, and everything. And it's all usually runs on Saturdays. And uh, sometimes it's hard to get children into the bowling alley to learn. Some do, and some turn out to be decent bowlers, too. Back here, we see the kind of automation that was still something new for Jim, Frank, and Carl when they first started out, but is only to be expected by the modern day bowler. And if there's anyone who knows about all of the inner workings of this place, it would have to be the company's longest tenured employee. This building was built in 1955, uh, four bowling on both floors, uh, 12 lanes here were put in downstairs at that time, and they decided to do something else with the upstairs. Uh, had different businesses, uh, furniture store, shoe store, and times. For a long time, the Rack and Q Pool Club was up there. In 1994, when the Rack and Q closed, uh, West Springfield Lanes from Elm Street uh, decided to merge with Agawam Bowl, and their lanes were and machines were moved over to here in the upstairs. So we have 10 lanes upstairs and 12 downstairs. For six nights out of the week, the downstairs area is occupied by League Bowl. Upstairs, though, is for anyone else who wants to try their luck. Bowling always seemed to have the feel of being that thing that people did back in the day, but judging by the number of cars in the parking lot of people that aren't here for league night, maybe it's still the thing to do. First things first, put on that fancy footwear. And it's a good idea to make sure they're comfortable as well as laced up tight. Next up, find the right colored ball that suits the mood. And lastly, take aim, fire away, and hope for a strike in my case, one pin. While taking out only one pin felt pretty terrible, anyone who thinks they're gonna come out and bowl nothing but strikes had better temper their expectations. And that's actually a good thing. Every time you come out and bowl candle pins, you can score better than you've ever scored before. Because you could score 300, theoretically, nobody's ever gonna get there. Uh, it's, it's that difficult, it's that much of a challenge. If the pins were, were five inches around and the balls were, were 10 inches, it'd be a lot easier. But we, we do enjoy the challenge. 